Hey everyone, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you are new here, my name is Kim and I am a newly retired elementary school teacher working now in Yokohama, Japan. Working? I thought you retired. <laughs> That's one of the main questions I get is if you are retired, how come you're still teaching or how come you're still working? And I thought in this video I'd explain one of the types of contracts among many different types of contracts that you could get in teaching here in Japan. Now, as you all know, I started on the JET program and the JET program gives you the opportunity to teach in either an elementary school, uh, junior high school, senior high school. Um, sometimes you even get the chance to work at special education schools for example, schools that are specifically for the blind or for students with learning disabilities. There's all different types of schools that you could be going to teach English at. And most of the time on JET, you will be doing team teaching. JET, for those of you that don't know the um, program, it stands for Japan Exchange and Teaching Program. And it's an opportunity to get your foot in the door if you're interested in working in Japan. And it's an excellent program to kind of get a feel of what it's like in Japanese schools. Now that contract is set for a period of time. Whenever you work in Japan, you are paying into a pension fund. It's the same for foreigners as well. You will be paying into a pension fund and whether or not you collect it in full is another question. Uh, I can go over details in a different video about that because I would have to do some research. I know most of my JET participant friends who left after the one, two, or three years that they did on the JET program, they returned home to their home country and they filed some kind of tax thing and you do get a portion of it back. I don't know the exact year, but if you want to collect your full pension, I believe you do have to establish permanent residency or have been working in Japan for, I think it's 25 consecutive years. I'm not sure. I'll have to do research on that, so please don't quote me on it. Or you can just look it up on the internet. How handy. <laughs> when I was uh, first starting, we couldn't just look it up in the internet. We did have to ask questions and, and it was difficult. But uh, in addition to contracts, there's so many different kinds of contracts. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the part-time contract because some of you may decide that you don't want to stay full-time at one specific place or maybe you need a little bit of free time to study Japanese or to learn about the culture or to just do other things in your life. As a part-timer, there is a minimum requirement, I believe, in order to get your visa. I think it goes by the salary that you are making as opposed to the number of hours you are making. I'm not really sure because in my situation, I just trusted that whatever hours I would be given would be enough for me. A part-time teacher might have other jobs. They might have three or four different part-time jobs in order to make ends meet. Some people like that lifestyle. For me, it wouldn't have been easy. I needed a full-time position at one school. I couldn't see myself going from school to school, but I do know people that have worked maybe two days a week at a university, one day a week at a kindergarten, and maybe uh, certain hours at another school. Some people also supplement their part-time contracts with other income, and you might be doing something totally unrelated to teaching. You might be doing tour guide, uh, travel things. Um, yeah, it all depends on your situation and your visa. There's a chime, so I only have about 10 more minutes to talk. Um, 
In my particular situation, I am working at the same school in a part-time contract. I've worked all three contracts. When I first came here, I had a limited term contract, which means I was able to work for a fixed term between three to five years. My salary was set, uh, basically benefits were set, everything was pretty much fixed, I guess, hence the term fixed contract. When I was able to get a tenured position, I was extremely lucky because the difference between a full-time contract and a permanent contract, world of difference. Now, at first, I didn't see much difference. In fact, my first paycheck with my permanent or tenured contract was significantly less than my monthly payment for my fixed term. And I thought, oh, did I make a mistake? No, I couldn't have made a mistake because why would everybody want a tenured position so badly if the terms were bad or negative? What I discovered is that once you get your tenured position, your salary is kind of changed around or they change it up a little bit. So you might be receiving less per month. However, you do get some very, very nice bonuses that happen at different times of the year. At my particular school, I got a small bonus at the end of March or sometime during March. Uh, the next one came in July, perfect for right before the summer months. And the last one came in December. When I first started working as a tenured teacher, my first bonus was not that much, so I wasn't quite sure how it was going to go in the future, and much to my delight and surprise, it got significantly better. And then you don't worry about making a little bit less per month, because in the end, it all adds up. Um, as a part-time teacher, you don't usually get paid for how many hours you work at this particular school, and I'm sure it's much the same at universities or boards of education or other places where you're teaching a class period. You get paid per class or per class period. So, for example, if you're teaching uh, five classes, you'll get paid a certain amount for each class. If you're at a university, same thing. For the number of classes you do will be the amount of money that you get. Now, I don't know about other part-time school situations, but in my case, if you're part-time, you only have to come for your class periods. So that means if everybody else's starting time is eight o'clock or 8.15, you do not have to clock in at that hour. As long as you are here in time to teach your class and you are allowed to leave as soon as your classes are finished. So if you have, for example, three classes during the day, once you finish your three classes, at the end of that third class, you are allowed to go. Isn't that kind of nice? <laughs> um, so, yeah, before I didn't have a fixed time schedule to begin with because my particular school is a very, um, I guess, trusting or everything is done pretty much by the honor system. As long as you're here for your classes and as long as you've left after your work is done, they're okay with that. Now granted, there's a lot of teacher meetings, committees, duties, and all that stuff that usually makes teachers stay a lot longer than the time that most people would be going home. It's not a typical eight to five job. Uh, the part-time hours are great because you're just teaching your classes and that's your main responsibility. Let's say a class is canceled because of an event or there is a holiday on the day that you're supposed to have classes, whether it be a national holiday or a school holiday or a typhoon day or something where your class gets canceled, we are still paid for that. I don't know how it works in other situations, but I'm really lucky because uh, I get paid for classes that are canceled. If I am absent or ill, 
or if I need to take a day off and I miss a class, usually I arrange it with um, my partner teacher to make sure that the class is covered. But you are also paid for that. So if you are out for illness or whatever, you will still get paid your normal salary for that. They won't dock you for that class, which I think is pretty generous. I consider myself to have really good work ethic, so I don't take advantage of that. However, I do think there could be people that maybe see that as a little bit of freedom to do whatever they want. So yeah, so for me it's more important to have a good work ethic and of course always be there for my classes, especially because these conditions are so generous. Why wouldn't I uh, dedicate and devote myself to my job? Especially because I love it. I wouldn't do it if I didn't love it. And I think that's the one question that I get is, why are you still working so hard? Why are you still doing this? It's because I've been a teacher for, gosh, almost the majority of my life. I started teaching when I was 19, I believe, um, 1980. 1980 was my first job um, in Los Angeles. And I just have been working ever since. I've been teaching the whole time. That's been my career the whole time. When I worked in Los Angeles, because we didn't get paid during the summer, I did have summer jobs and I took advantage of that. I loved having summer jobs that were maybe totally unrelated to teaching. Can you guess what those summer jobs are? <laughs> no, I did things like I was an aerobic instructress at a health spa. And that was fun, especially because I had never done an aerobics class in my life. And when I went to apply for the job, it was like an audition. We had to actually do a class and thank goodness I was able to keep up. And that was, that was fun. I, it lasted for a summer and then I continued on after that until it just became too hard to teach in the afternoon or teach all day and then work nights. That was too much for me. Um, I also, gosh, there was a time when it was really hard to get uh, a summer savings together. So I decided I'm going to go and apply for every game show that I can, you know, maybe get on. So uh, I took the, they have like little exams or tests to see whether or not you can qualify. And yeah, I knew I couldn't do Jeopardy because... I know my trivia, but I don't know all my facts. However, I did get selected to be on a game show called Sale of the Century. Maybe some of you remember that. Uh, that's fun. I should use that for another video, but I'll just say it briefly here. So um, <clears throat> you keep going through a series of auditions, and I made it all the way to the final step because you have to do a sample game. They have to see how animated you are. They have to see whether or not you make, I guess, good TV or whether you understand the rules of the game, all that stuff. And then once you get selected, which I did, you have to go out and you have to buy a new wardrobe because they told us there were certain colors that you could wear that would focus and look good on camera, but you could never look better than the model they have. Uh, at that time, the model was Summer Bar Bartholomew. I believe she was a former Miss USA. And so you could not wear printed clothes or anything that would detract from Summer Barth, I can't say that, Bartholomew. You couldn't wear anything that would uh, clash or mix with Miss Bartholomew's clothes. Ah, why can't I say that? I guess because I have to teach in a few minutes. Um, so yeah, so I went and I got very inexpensive, solid colored clothes. I got a turquoise blue dress. I got a pink dress. I had a, uh, I think it was like a teal dress. And then you're in the audience. The reason why you have to bring five clothes is because they tape a whole week in one day. 
And so if you are lucky enough to win and come back the next day, you have to, of course, change your outfits. Well, out of all of us selected, there's, I think, about maybe 20 people that are selected. And on the day of filming, you're in the audience and they, right, they have the contestants, they choose it from a hat. So three, the three contestants, of course, it's only two because the champion for the previous episode is still there and then it's kind of by luck so if it's a different champion your chances are pretty good of of getting selected or I don't know in the end I didn't get selected so I was there for the whole week of taping I was ready with my dresses I was ready to go on there and uh, give my shot at trivia, but I didn't get selected. I did come back with a new wardrobe, which at the time I should have been a little bit smarter and did what many of the other contestants did, is they left the tags on their clothes because, um, right, if they didn't get selected, they could just return the clothes. Me, I took it all off and I was all ready to wear them. I did wear those outfits a lot at school. <laughs> So, yeah, so in Japan, the need for having to have a, another part-time job as a teacher to make ends meet is usually not necessary. That being said, there are some teachers, I'm sure, that perhaps would like to have a part-time job, but it really depends on the Board of Education and your particular contract. Many teachers, full-time and tenured, are not allowed to have another job. Um, I think in part-time it's okay, but yeah, you're usually too busy as a full-time teacher that I don't know when you would have time for anything else, to be honest. Even when I was working on JET and I was doing private lessons, which is what a lot of people in the teaching field, especially the English teaching field do, is they have private lessons or they may go to a community center, which I did. I went to the community center and taught English. And sometimes you're asked to do special events like English summer camps or special fun activities. And I did all those. And you would have that opportunity as well. Uh, at this point, I really don't need to. I can really just focus on my job here and then go back. Another perk as a part-time teacher is that you don't have to go to staff meetings. You don't have to be assigned, or wait, you, it's not you don't have to. You are not. <laughs> you are not assigned to other duties such as uh, excursion, chaperoning, um, monitoring the commuting like commuting patrol duty oh what else yeah there's a number of duties you don't have to do anyways i have like two minutes before my students come so i better sign off here and i will try to continue this a little bit later all right be back soon <laughs> bandit all right i mean this is actually not so comfortable. Let me see if I can do this. Ugh. All right. Ugh. This is too, this is maybe too casual. Sorry. All right. We're going to just go with this. <laughs> Excuse the background craziness. One of the best things I think about working part time is I'm sure it differs from job to job and workplace to workplace. But for me, being a teacher and just having to come in to teach, it's so much different than having to stay a full day and supervise and watch the kids uh, at lunchtime, after school, all the other stuff that comes with being a full-time teacher because all I do is just what I enjoy doing. I teach, I have pretty much the same classes, the same responsibilities in my classes, such as planning, grading, assessing, uh, teaching, all that kind of stuff. It hasn't changed since I was full-time, tenured, all of that stayed the same. But mental health-wise, 
it's so nice to be able to be finished and then leave. Before I used to always have to eat school lunch and supervise when I was having school lunch. Now I finish and I can go out to lunch. I can bring my lunch and eat in my classroom. It's a lot more or a lot less stressful and it's so nice to be able to leave before the kids leave. Usually most schools tell you that your hours or that you have to stay until all the students leave because we're responsible for them when they're at school. But I'm leaving sometimes at 11.30, 12. I can go treat myself to a nice lunch. I can take care of errands in the afternoon. I can shop or take a nap. So that's one of the big perks about working part-time when you're retired. It's probably different when you have to make ends meet and maybe you're really rushing to take care of several things at one time. I can imagine that must be a lot busier. But, all right, let's talk about the downside of working part-time. Now... I've been at this particular school for almost 10 years. During the time that I was tenured, it was so nice to get your monthly paycheck and those bonuses. <sighs> so nice. Plus, my school also had something where they gave each teacher 100,000 yen, basically $1,000 to spend on something that would help them in their teaching or help them with their job. So it could be a computer, it could be an iPad, it could be clothes like rainwear or shoes or a suitcase. Anything that you might need for your job and you can use that for pretty much whatever you need. Write it off and that's almost like a yearly present. So you kind of choose a present for yourself. I've bought a nice suitcase. I've bought mountain climbing shoes. I bought iPads, cameras. Most of my cameras are all from this uh, fund that they give us. I bought a, vid a VHS rewinder because <laughs> I'm old school. I still have a zillions of VHS tapes. And yeah, I know you can just dub them and get them on, um, what is it, CDs, stuff now. But that process takes time. I did get, though, with this money, I got a VHS video rewinder and a recorder that will dub your VHS tapes onto CDs. So, yeah, so that was kind of a good investment. The last um, present or the last thing I got with this money when I was working last year, I got a, a Cricut machine. A, is that what? Cricut. Cricut machine. I hope I said that right. I haven't opened it yet. It's still in the box because I just haven't had time to learn how to use it. And I thought, well, now that I'm retired, I'm going to learn how to do some crafty things and enjoy making stickers and all that kind of stuff. So I chose to get that with that money. And I still had left over. And you can use every penny of it. So I think I bought memory sticks and, and things like that. But um, during COVID, when we needed good camera equipment, uh, I bought... I bought myself a, a green screen, I bought a tripod, lights, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so that was nice having that, but now hmm, I don't have that anymore. I also don't have the nice bonuses. I have a nice paycheck compared to what other part-time jobs may pay, but you have to kind of change your lifestyle, right? Like before I was living a lot more freely and now I I guess I have to really make sure that I spend a little bit more wisely set aside enough for one thing oh my my battery's running out <laughs> 
So hold on and I'll change batteries and I'll be right back. And we're back. <laughs> the other downside about working part time, I don't know if it's just in my position or if it could be in other part time jobs as well, is you don't always feel a part of the staff. And when you think about it, my colleagues are working super long hours, sometimes until the evening. Sometimes I remember faculty meetings lasting until eight o'clock. Sometimes uh, they get they get assignments and extra duties. For example, if a teacher's absent, we don't have a substitute system in Japan. It's usually another teacher covering another class. And so sometimes they get that assignment or there's always something going on. Sometimes it's um, having to do uh, an extra committee job or writing something for the school newsletter or trying to plan an international exchange program and getting all the things that you need done, done. And yeah, so a lot of times I, I don't feel guilty like the guilty like, oh no, I should be doing this. But I do feel guilty that they are working so hard and some of my colleagues are so overworked. And here I am, happy and stress-free and enjoying myself. And I know nobody blames you or nobody thinks anything because they figured you're retired, you've earned this. But I. I, I kind of see the way that they look at the other part-time teachers thinking, oh, they have it made. They don't have to do this. They don't have to do this. We're not invited a lot of times to the parties, the staff parties, the um, thank you for working so hard parties. We don't get invitations to that. And I guess I understand why, because you're not there as, long as these other teachers are so some parties we do get invited to or the part-timers do get invited to but there seems to be a big distinction between part-time teachers and full-time teachers so my relationships are still really strong with all the teachers even though I'm working in a part-time role I still have good relationships and I still have no trouble just going down and chatting, catching up, being a little bit sociable. But I think for my fellow part-time teachers, they haven't done all the, I want to say heavy duty work or all the long uh, stressful work because they've always been able to leave. So they don't really have the same type of bond that maybe I have. It's, I guess it's sort of like FOMO, fear of missing out in a way because I feel like I'm missing something or I should be doing something or I know what I can do to help but nobody's letting me help. Do I offer? Do I just smile and say, oh, good luck? It's sort of, it's a weird feeling. It's not a bad feeling. It's just a different feeling. I would say that if you're someone that's just coming to work to Japan for the first time or you're just getting started on your career, part-time work is not a bad option. You might not make as much money as a full-time teacher. You might not get the perks that I discussed a little bit earlier. But if you're not quite sure which path to go, I, I think it is a, a good way to see what you want to do or help you determine whether or not that's the right type of work for you. If you've never taught anywhere, like either in your home country or in Japan, and you're just not sure if you're going to enjoy it or what it's like, sometimes having a part-time position is not so bad because if you don't like it, it's very easy to leave and change. If you do like it, you've got a little connection and so possibly if there's a full-time position that opens or if you're interested in doing a little bit more, you can seek out 
a full-time position, then I think that's a, a good point of working part-time. Uh, if you're, <clears throat> if you've got other things on your plate, uh, maybe, maybe you're the spouse of somebody that's working here full time, or maybe you want to do something like YouTube or a craft, or you have an, an Etsy store, or you're trying to write a book or a thesis, or you're balancing graduate school or a doctorate program then I think part-time is another good option for you to do. I think there's pros and cons about getting a tenured position or a set position too early, in my opinion. A lot of Japanese people, I think when they enter a company or they do get a permanent contract at their school, it's almost like a promise to that company or even themselves that they're going to stay with that company or school or program for as long as they can and what if down the road things change or what if you want to try something else or you have some kind of conflict at work. You're not happy in the job that you do, but you've kind of committed. There's no law in saying you can't break your contract and you can't, even if you're tenured or full-time and if you're not happy, you can easily transfer or ask for a transfer or make a, a change altogether. Nothing is tying you to that position. It might be hard. <laughs> it might be, you might be met with people asking you why, but ultimately it's your decision. When I accepted the tenured position at my school, I was what? I was in my 50s, late 50s. I keep thinking to myself, man, if I had gotten a tenured position back when I first came to Japan in my 30s, what would my life have been like? Maybe I would have had a lot more money, but then again, maybe I would have spent it more. Maybe I would have done a lot more traveling. I'm kind of happy that I worked so many jobs here in Japan. I'm, I'm glad that I've went to different prefectures, different cities. I had different types of teeping, teeping, teaching jobs. Every experience in every school that I worked at gave me more experience. It widened my circle of connections and networking and friendships and mentors. If I had stayed at one of the positions for a long time, or if I stayed at one place for a long time, I think about all the people in my life that I wouldn't have met. I was devastated when I had to leave certain prefectures especially because I had built my life there and I really thought, oh, okay, this is great. I don't ever have to move again. I'm settled. And then things change and I did have to move and I did have to find a new job. But at that time, it was stressful and you get a little bitter about the circumstances that happened to you and uh, you can't really play the victim because you really have to take control of your life and move forward and that's what I did and I'm so glad that I did that because every school that I've been at and I mean every school back from the ones in Totori to where I'm working now I have met the most amazing teachers both Japanese national teachers as well as foreign nationals who are teaching in Japan. I have worked with so many great administrators, um, administrators that really know their stuff and from them I've been able to learn and grow and develop my own skills as a teacher, as an educator, as an English language instructor, whatever position that I've been in. I've been able to travel and go on international programs. So 
I guess where I'm getting at with this is if you're in a situation and something happens or change happens or you feel like you want to settle down but all of a sudden your world turns topsy-turvy, it's okay because it's that same old everything happens for a reason but I do think that everything happens for a reason. People come into your life for different reasons whether even if it's good or bad if they're people that you didn't get along with or people that hurt you or betrayed you or disappointed you those people are actually teaching you about more about yourself as much as sometimes your relationships break down or something happens at work that disappoints you or upsets you that's teaching you to either change something about your situation learn something grow from it we can talk about those kind of incidents and change and how to adapt and how to grow without becoming a victim or without falling apart or without wanting to seek vengeance, all those. We can talk about that in another video. So, yeah, if um, if these kind of talks or if you're interested, especially if you're planning to teach in Japan or if you're planning to work in Japan or if you're at a point in your life like me where you're retired and you're still working and you don't know whether or not to continue working or just stay retired. If those kind of topics interest you, please consider subscribing because I'd love to have you join the wonderful community that we've kind of built together. It has nothing to do with me, guys. It is everything to do with the people that come and, and make comments or say, hey, you know what? I learned something from this or you're not alone. That's exactly how I feel when I go into different channels and I try to make it a point to let someone that I've watched know, you know what, this video really resonated with me or hey, thanks for that. Thanks for your, your sharing your experiences and insight because we can all grow and learn from each other and I think that's the beauty of, of YouTube. Other platforms, you're sharing a lot of information, you're sharing photos, and it's so easy to say like, oh my gosh, that's so, oh, I'm so envious, oh wow, look at that. But I think YouTube's one of the, um, one of the strongest platform, platforms in being able to connect and share and learn and grow and feel like you're not alone. And even if nobody comes and watches like, for me, if if nobody watches, I feel like just by expressing my thoughts out loud that it's something that helps me to grow and think about, hmm, you know what? <laughs> I actually did that and I'm okay. I'm, I'm proud that I survived that. Or, you know what? Yeah, this this experience or this situation is a challenge, but... I can do it. I can handle it. Let me just get my things out and, and I can move forward. So anyways, I'm going to end here and I am going to also start working on some Japan stuff because I have the next, I have a few days off. So I intend to explore a little bit. Holiday stuff is coming out like the illuminations and special uh, sets, sets, of, that's not the word in, in English, special dining options or cute little desserts and afternoon teas. So we're going to go do some of that uh, during my, my little break time for my refreshment and just to get a little change of scenery. So thank you so much for watching, for your comments, for your support. Wherever you are, take care, and I will see you next time. Bandit is just sitting on my lap. I would pick him up, but...
he's asleep. All right. Thanks again. Catch you later. Bye.